Hi everyone and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to add custom markings like these runway ahead signs I've got here. And to do this we'll be adding our own textures and then placing these down on aprons. So before we get started placing anything down in the sim we need to set up some new folders with our textures. So I've got here the tutorial airport folder and I'm going to go into the package sources directory and we've got in here the data folder which is where we have all of our shapes and scenery files that we've created in the last few tutorials. So within package sources we need to make a new folder here and this folder is going to be called materials that's with a lowercase m and then in here we need to make another folder and this one's going to be called textures with a capital T like so. So we've got package sources, materials and then textures inside of that. Now what we want to do is we want to copy any textures that we're going to be using into this textures folder so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Like so, so for this tutorial I'm going to be adding a runway ahead, so I've got the runway and the ahead textures. You'll probably notice a few things about these, so firstly the textures on aprons are actually flipped when you place them down, so if it's something that the direction matters, like text or an arrow, you need to make sure that that's backwards in your texture PNGs like I've got here. Also if you've got empty space on your texture, you need to align the actual part of the texture that matters with the bottom of the texture file, so if I open up the runway here you can see I've got a big blank space above here, the texture is square and the runway marking is at the bottom and I'll show you why that matters later on when we get to placing our aprons. And the final thing you need to make sure when you're making textures is that they need to be a multiple of 4. So my texture files here are 512 by 512 pixels and whilst textures are not required to be square it's definitely recommended to have them that way because when you load them into the material editor in the simulator they'll get stretched into a square. If I had this one and it was 512 by 128 pixels say and it was just this rectangle here, it would get stretched vertically to be a full square and that's probably not what you want, so make sure your textures are all square and multiples of four. Okay, with that done we can go back and jump into the sim. So I've just got the project opened up here and what we want to do is we want to go over to the project editor and we're adding a new asset group to this package. So select the package in the project editor and then come over to the inspector view. If you don't have that open it's just under view inspector, just tick that there. In the inspector we can see here we've got our asset group, so we've got our BGL which is the scenery in the airport. We want to add a new one here, so click on this little plus icon, you'll get a list of the different types of asset group we can add. So we want to add a material lib, so I'm just going to click on material lib there. That will make us a new asset group and then we can go and click edit here, and that will open up this asset group in the inspector. So what we want to do, we want to give this a name, so I'm going to call those mine RB materials. So make sure you hit enter, uh, so that doesn't get cancelled out of the input field there. Um, the type is already set in material lib, we want to set the asset directory, we can't type this in so hit the three dots here, and we want to just select the folder that we've created, so package sources materials need to be the materials folder and not the textures folder. So it should look something like this, package sources backslash materials. And the output directory we just type this in, so we're going to have material lib, and that's material libs plural, and then backslash rb materials. So you just generally type uh, what the name of your package is and then end that with a backslash as well. With that done we can click load in editor here and that will open up the material editor. As we can see here the package is selected, if I just scroll over, we've got the asset RB materials. If you just opened up the material editor you could, you could also click select here and then choose the asset there and click select. That would do the same as clicking load in editor in the inspector. So if we click file, new or click control and N to open up the material inspector this is where we create our materials and add our textures. So firstly it's worth checking something, so if you go to the albedo and just try and select your texture, you may get an error like this. And I think this is because of when you select the asset directory you don't get a backslash on there. And this is quite easy to solve, so if you go to the project editor, save that with the control and S or click save here and then close your project and then open it up again. open up your materials again and now if we choose our albedo again we shouldn't get an error anymore like so. So that's just a quick tip if you start seeing that error you just need to close out of your project and as you can see here we have a backslash here now so that's just altered that when it saved and reopened the project. Okay so with that done in the material editor again if you don't have the material inspector just click file new and then we can end start entering our details for our material. So under the name I'm going to call my material rb underscore runway because it's going to be the left part of the texture. Make sure you hit enter on that. For the surface here, so this is actually what the 
texture or the material, the pattern is behind the texture file that we're adding on. Um, so as we can see on the taxiway here, we've got like an asphalt texture of the little grainy bits and that's copied onto the texture below. And if we would change the surface to something like cement or grass, we'd get a dirty, uh, rocky kind of background. And then uh, the one we want is actually paint at the bottom here. So that just gives us a more painted look. So then once we've done that, we can select our texture. So under the albedo box, as we did before, you just click in this black square here to choose the albedo. You open up your package sources, materials, textures, and then choose the one you want. So we want runway.png and that will load up here and it's backwards and that's correct because it will flip it when we add it to the apron later on. And that's all we need to do. There's this advanced features drop down, but I don't think these work for normal textures. They're for visual effects only, as it says on this little question mark. So once you've done that, we can just hit save here. And if I just choose in the tags, you'll see we've got all, we've got the name of our package and we've got our user. If we just click uh, the name of our package, we can see now RB runway is present there. So I'm just going to go and make the uh, RB ahead as well for the other part of my texture. Like that. So now I've got two materials in here. We've got RB ahead and we've got RB runway. And as you can see, when I click on those, they get opened up in the material inspector. And we can make changes here and then save and apply and that will apply it to any aprons that have already got the textures on in the world. So I just click save and I'm just going to close the material inspector to get that out of our way. So we're now ready to create our aprons with these materials on. So we need to come over to the project editor again and then select the BGL and click load in editor in the inspector panel. And that will pop us into our top down view like so. So if I zoom in here and we can see where I had the markings before. What we want to do is we want to go to the objects panel and if you don't have that open just go to your scenery editor click view and objects there in the object type we need to select apron and then it, for these markings i found it's best to use the square apron you can use the other ones there's no reason why you can't but square is just a bit simpler to use especially for these square markings then we click the add button here and that puts our apron into the world there so i'm just going to drag this over to the side so we can see it better open up the material editor go to the package that you have and you should see your materials here and they're currently gray because they've been unloaded when we loaded up the scenery project so i'm just going to choose the rb runway i'll select that and then click down in the properties panel taxi concrete is what it's currently set at i'll just click that and it will change to the texture that we've got you also want to make sure that local uv and stretch uv are checked these just uh relate to the uv mapping of the texture as you can see here if i untick those it starts acting strangely, um, more how a typical apron would, so you just want to tick those and then you'll get the UV coordinates following the apron like so, which is a lot better for these markings. So I'm going to drag this over to where I want it. As you can see, it's going underneath the taxiway here and that's because these taxiways have their surfaces enabled. If they were disabled, you wouldn't have this issue. You could play with the priority if you've got an apron on here as well. But I'm just going to tick force draw above runways and then we'll be able to see it over the taxiway here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click my middle mouse button there to pick the rotation gizmo and I'm just going to try and rotate this so it's parallel to the runway and I'm going to move it into position so being one of the square aprons we can use these little white dots click on those and then we can resize things this way so I'm just going to resize it down like so and this is why when I was talking about having your texture aligned with the bottom edge of the image is important because as you can see here when I move it down we can keep moving down onto the bottom of the texture and then cut off that top bit if it was aligned with the top you wouldn't be able to do that and you'd have to leave it square so it just makes it a bit easier if you have lots of these markings around you can make your apron smaller so they don't overlap or things like that so i've got my uh, little sign there i'm just going to make it a little bit smaller as well uh, resize it like this you could also use the scale gizmo if you prefer to do it that way. I find this way personally a little bit easier. I think that's pretty good. Uh, maybe just rotate it a little bit more so it aligns better, like so. Okay, so now let's add the other side of this. So rather than creating a new apron completely, I'm just gonna go over to the scenery editor and make sure I've got the apron selected by clicking it in the world or in the list here. It's this apron rectangle. I'm just going to click duplicate on there. And as we can see, we get another entry popping up here. And that's pre-selected so we can just drag that over to the other side like so and that's got all the same properties so it's already got force draw above runways selected and stuff like that 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the other material that I've created, RB underscore ahead, and I'm going to select that in the surface box like so. Now my RB ahead material is a slightly different size, so what I need to do is just resize this a bit so it fits on better, and I'm actually going to align it with the other one so I can make sure they're exactly the same size. Like so. And I'll move that back across. And that's basically how you add the aprons on there. So what you want to do now is make sure that you've saved your scenery project. So go over to the scenery editor and click Control S or click on save scenery at the bottom here. And then go over to your project editor to make sure that's saved as well. Again, Control S or project save. And then we want to select our project, go over to the inspector and build our package. And we're just checking that we've got no errors down here. So you can disregard these red and orange ones at the bottom. We're looking for the line that says finished, one skipped, six done, zero failed. So we've got zero failed here and that's good because it built all of our packages correctly. So that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you've got any questions or if there's anything you'd like me to cover in future videos, do let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.